I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward at what might happen in coming weeks, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market was, well, what I would describe as mildly chaotic in the last week, as small cap leadership hit a ceiling and selling in the Russell kind of did weigh on the markets, which did flatten out some. Speculators moved from one group to the next, as last week was weed stocks moving up, and they soared early uh, with big moves up on Wednesday and then collapsed on Thursday, becoming the next game of hot doobie. IPO fever is still high, and Bumble is the next stock that goes public. Uh, CEO Whitney Wolf Hurd uh, becomes the youngest woman to ever take a, a large company public, and she certainly swiped right. Monday we saw stocks move up, led by the energies and materials, as news came out that Elon Musk bought $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. I commented uh, to members and out on social media and uh, wondered what's going on. And uh, he said he would start accepting payments for uh, his cars in Bitcoin. I wondered why would he even do that? Bitcoin's so volatile, would people even do that? Of course, the answer that I got from people was, well, that's the drug cartels. Those are the people that use Bitcoin. And uh, that's who's going to buy uh, the Tesla cars uh, using Bitcoin. I thought about that a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know if I can verify that, <laughs> but I do think that somebody's making a point. Tuesday, the impeachment trial got underway, and that was a distraction. Markets were quite, were quite quiet uh, during Tuesday, but volatility did come back in on Wednesday, as Musk again said that he bought Dogecoin this time. And when that news came out, Tesla stock took a hit, like $50 quickly. That sent the NASDAQ stocks down. The S&P followed. S&P fell about 50 also. And Bitcoin fell $3,000. Yes, not much volatility in there. What is Dogecoin, by the way? Dogecoin uh, was conceived about... Uh, eight years ago, I think it was 2013, when somebody wanted to say how ridiculous Bitcoin was. And they said, I'll show you how easily I could create a cryptocurrency that is just as good as Tesla. Well, Dogecoin was created as a joke uh, to knock Bitcoin. And it turns out that um, Dogecoin became popular now. And uh, they, the price of that went up from like a penny up to nine cents. It's now somewhere in the seven cents areas and uh, just uh, shows you the ridiculousness of the cryptocurrency world that we live in right now. So it was a much more volatile day as the market fell a lot early in the day, but then the market rallied back strongly on Powell's speech, who was actually honest, and he said unemployment is really closer to 10%. That 6.3 number is bogus, and it's really closer to 3. Well, he didn't use the word bogus, but the words he did use is that the Fed needs to be patiently accommodative, and a society-wide effort was needed uh, in order to get a recovery in the market. Well, um, with, uh, I'm, I mean in the economy, we've had the recovery in the market, and with a 4% growth rate expected ahead, why the hell don't they get just out of the way and let the uh, interest rates find their own real levels instead of the manipulative market going on that blows up the bubbles we're in right now that's going to end up in a very difficult, challenging period for investors following this, just as it always does. Well, anyway, the Russell uh, flattened out and began to move down on Wednesday, and that kind of started a trend where the Russell was starting to get weaker than the rest of the market. Russell and the small caps have been leaders on the upside, gaining much more, and even for the week, they did better this week, but kind of uh, right around midweek is when that tone started to change. We have to keep our eye on that. 
Thursday, there was selling in small caps that continued, and but it was another bungee jump day. As uh, early, there was a move to the downside in the S&Ps, about 30 points, uh, and then strength in the tech stocks came in, and then the markets recovered, as they seem to do every single day. You just can't keep them down. Friday was quietly mixed, really. Uh, investors seemed tired. Uh, small caps, they were down. They moved up a little bit. And our list of 300 stocks that we follow had some of the smallest overall changes, gains and losses that we've seen in weeks. So the market seems to really be quieting down. Um, University of Michigan sentiment did come out, and that was the, the lowest number we've seen in six months. And inflation expectations are the highest we've seen in many years. Well, add that together. Uh, low, uh, low, low expectation of growth, high expectation of inflation, that equals stagflation. It's a word that seems to be coming back to the vernacular of people that are looking at markets and economies. So that's it. That's what's going on right now. But coming up, I have a lot for you. Uh, we're going to look at five super strong stocks, super highly priced stocks, incredibly highly valued that have a lot of risk at the moment. We're also going to look at gold over the one to three month view. And we're going to look at the stock market. And I'm going to show you the amazing 30 day cycle, which uh, has just been uh, running for, for a very, very long period of time, many, many months and uh, which is in line with what we've been signaling about uh, the market uh, for uh, this period now between uh, mid-February and mid-March. So we're going to look at that and you'll be able to see some great stuff. Here we are at midday on Friday and uh, the stock market is, uh, has edged up just a little bit after being lower. Index is uh, mostly gaining over 1% on the week, except the Russell, which is up 2.5% on the week, though, as I said, small caps seem to be stalling right now. Bond market, uh, 30 years lose a half a point, and the 10 years up about two basis points. They've now moved up to 1.19%, uh, and uh, that doesn't sound like much, does it? And I think that they're on the way to 1.6 to 1.9% this year, and you can see that if you look at my big picture analysis of that in the year-end show. Gold moves up about $8, and that's despite some Friday sluggishness. Uh, and the silver market is catching on right now. It's up uh, about 50 cents on the week, maybe a little bit more right now. Uh, it's a bit stronger than gold, uh, despite the fact that the uh, uh, gold has not been able to put a lot of energy in the upside. Uh, silver seems to be strengthening a little bit more right now. Uh, the dollar uh, loses about uh, half a percent. And uh, what I want you to do, if you're really interested in the dollar and gold and, and, and uh, the inflation situation, do watch our uh, big picture analysis on that. Uh, in, uh, we're going to give you the long-term view. We published that on Thursday for our level two, three, and four members. You're going to be fascinated. I'm getting emails that said it's one of the best pieces I've ever done. So I think it was absolutely great. It really looks at inflation from a very realistic way and then gives you the idea of the ideas of how gold and, and dollar operate together and what's really important for gold right now. I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on in this show, but you really should watch that big picture analysis on uh, dollar, gold, and inflation. Oil for the week up about a dollar forty. Uh, that's on top of a five dollar gain the previous week, almost five dollars, and that has now moved up to uh, quite a resistance area. Though our target is still in the area of about sixty dollars, uh, and it is moving up there uh, nicely. So that is uh, the beginning of the show, and I've got some great stuff to show you uh, as we move forward in here. So don't go away. Don't speed forward. Uh, this show has got just uh, unbelievable, interesting things that I'm going to bring you. One of them, uh, first of all, is that I want you to go to our website, AskSlim.com, and explore that. Get some idea about what we have in there. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bell to know when we post videos, which we do regularly. And give this one a thumbs up, like the video. And follow me on Twitter at AskSlim. That's where I post a lot of things. RV posts a lot of things every single week. And now and then I put up a political comment. So uh, for those of you that get annoyed by that, I'll probably annoy you. Uh, but I think it's a lot of interesting things we put up on Twitter. And you can write to Matt at AskSlim.com for membership info. And don't forget, we've expanded our Level 1 memberships 
Uh, and uh, if you're a free member or have never been an Aslim member, do go to the site and sign up for this unbelievable deal. You're going to get our Slimulator Momentum Tracker, over a thousand symbols that scans and sorts and gives you one of the best ways you'll ever see momentum conditions with our output that shows you very bullish, bullish all the way down to very bearish, uh, and momentum uh, on three different time frames. It's just absolutely brilliantly done. Uh, and you can get our stock index report weekly, ETF report weekly. You'll see our new trader workbench where you can organize, prioritize, and save and track all your analysis in a very easy way. You'll get the archive to this show uh, and uh, we'll let you know when the minutes come out so that you can just speed through and go to the you know, areas that you like uh, on our uh, video. Uh, and you'll be able to see our Ask Slim Live replays, which we do every couple of weeks, uh, where you're going to see 70 minutes, just unbelievable teaching that we do in there. And our special uh, videos also. We often uh, invite uh, people in level one also to those live events. So all that, I mean, look at that, $14.95 a month and 30, 30 bucks for three months. That's 10 bucks a month for all of this. So you want to get a good taste for what we do, um, do sign up for level one. Uh, 30 bucks for three months or 14.95 if you want to try it out for a month just amazing all right so now let's switch over and do some analysis we're going to look at five stocks in here so what i did was uh, i i looked through our, our list of stocks and some other stocks and i wanted to get a sense being that you know we we there's so much uh, out there that talks about how bubbly this market is well when you get in a market that is this bubbly um, the uh, likelihood of some stocks that are uh, being driven to the upside to levels that are beyond comprehension well it's pretty high uh, if you you know kind of look through the lists and you have specific criteria that you're looking for where well, you're gonna find them well I was out to find what stocks are just insane and I think that I found these five that are going to be pretty interesting. The criteria is they have to be overbought by our measurement. That is a far distance from the 34-week moving average. Also, they have to have no earnings and little prospect of earnings uh, over the next year or two. And they have to be trading near a high. In other words, they haven't given up too much ground because we want to have something that's actionable if somebody wants to sell or if they're interested in the short side. We're sharing our analysis of this and the expect, expected pullbacks in time and price. These are not recommendations. We're not telling you to short them. We're not telling you to sell your long positions. We're simply telling you what the highest probabilities are based on the type of analysis that we do. So we're going to show you these five stocks right now. And I think you're going to be fascinated by this, especially if you don't, if you haven't seen cycle analysis before. First stock we're going to open up right here for you to see is Roku. Extremely popular stock, and we all know what they do. They're in the uh, video streaming business. Uh, and uh, of course that business got extremely hot during the COVID time. Uh, the stock uh, was kind of languishing down over here, traded as low as uh, the, this area of about $61, $62 in March in the panic, uh, the COVID panic. And it has since gone up from that level all the way up to a high of 485. I want you to note that uh, the earnings, I checked them so they're not far off because this was last December since I last updated it. They're pretty much close to this. Uh, whereas they're expected to lose money in this year uh, after having uh, lost money last year and the next year they're not expected to make any real money either. So uh, the PE, well there was no PE because there's no earnings. The stock is trading or traded up to almost exactly the bottom of this FIB extension zone. That FIB extension zone is created from the last cycle right in here in order to get that projection. The, you can see each of these FIB extension zones, it went through it so easily on the upside as the buyers were coming in, anticipating that, well, everybody's staying home, so you really need to uh, have streaming to keep you busy. Uh, and that uh, has really lifted the stock. The stock, now I want you to see the cyclical action. This is a cycle bracket for those of you that are new. That is simply a guide. It's a drawing tool. It helps us understand the rhythms or the flows in the market. So this is a, a measure of money flow. Actually, there is a half cycle that's in here that I can see that's actually shorter. So what I can do just for demonstration is grab our tool right over here.
here. And I'm just going to go right in here and show you how there's kind of a half cycle that lines up right over there. And those half cycle lows are right over here and right over here and right over here. And then one due out right over here. So we would expect that this stock would pull back and then have another rally and then pull back again sharply. The stock traded up to 485. Our guess is it will trade uh, probably down here to about 380. Now I said one of the criteria is, over, is being overbought. We look at overbought by the distance from specific moving averages. This is the 13 week moving average. This is the 34 week moving average. You can see that what happens is that these moving averages are essentially a magnet. It is very rare that a cycle ends, which is where this nests down over here, without the 13 week getting tested. And for two cycles in a row to have that, extremely rare. So with the 13 week coming up here, well, towards that 400 area, and the 34 week way down over here in the 250 area and coming up over here, we're anticipating that the potential upside in this stock now, it's trading at 460, maybe about $30. The potential downside in here is, in our opinion, over $100. So based on this analysis and time and price, we would expect that it would get a decline into March, another rally, and then a decline out over here in towards, and this will show me the date just by highlighting this right here, in towards June. So uh, our opinion is the risk rewards are poor for the upside in Roku and based on technicals and the fundamentals that I just combined in here looking at it, this is a very high risk stock that is valued extremely high. So that's number one. Let's take a look at number two, which is Twilio, which is T-W-L-O. And here is Twilio right over here. This is uh, for internet connectivity, information services, and you can see the cyclic action in here also. Let's blow this up right there. Don't forget, you can go to AskSlim.com and learn more about cycle analysis. Look at the rhythms in this stock and how they follow beautifully. You can see we put in the momentum conditions. Uh, and uh, our momentum indicator is this whole moving average right in here. And you can see momentum is still strong uh, right there. Earnings, well, they lost, uh, they lost money the previous year. Um, they may or may not get to 17 cents uh, here in 2021, uh, 17 cents. Let's, let's see, what is the PE in there? Well, I didn't calculate it because that's a, f a forward PE. We don't really know it. They may actually have a loss. And the stock is in the 400s again. So this is insanity. Again, you can see that 13-week moving average right over here as it comes and tests it and tickles it lots of times, and the 34 right over here. 34 is coming up to that support area around 330. This is a projection over the next, uh, actually into mid-March, which is where we see a corrective period in the stock market. Uh, which takes you down probably to about 373. So the risk rewards, in our opinion, are that we are getting into a corrective period. You can see in here there were about four weeks on the downside. There's about four weeks left right over here. This one over here was about four weeks on the downside. This was a swamped one. This was strong. It only had about a week to the downside, which was really pretty rare. It still moved down from 247 to down to about 212. So that was a 15% drop, even in a strong cycle like that we're anticipating a move down here to about 370 uh, in uh, Twilio. It may very well be under a very strong condition. You can see we're pointing for it to go back up to the highs after that in April-May period. So uh, if you're a bull on this stock, uh, maybe you want to gut it out, sit through that move to the downside. There may be other opportunities for more active traders uh, or self-directed investors. When you look at Twilio, extremely high price, crazy price, very likely to pull back to those support zones. The next one is a rare stock, and that is Rare. Rare is a pharmaceutical stock, and this stock comes up from a price of 40 to about 180 uh, in uh, this just this year. Um, it's it just absolutely amazing. Uh, and uh, look at the earnings in this stock. Uh, what earnings? The amount of losses, this stock may, may not make money for years. Uh, and uh, you can see in here that this is interesting because it, these are very strong cycles, as you can see. As These are called right-hand translations where the peak is made way on the right side of the cycle and then you have only small periods of decline. So you can see this one had almost no early declines, this one either. 
but this one is failing from those levels almost immediately. This is declaring the potential for a double top in here. So my opinion is, is if you get some rally out into here, which is possible, uh, it will likely be a sell. But look at here what came yesterday. JPM downgraded this stock. And uh, that is affecting the stock pretty negatively. Outrageously priced stock in here, uh, Ultragenics, uh, and uh, a uh, opportunity, maybe a rare opportunity, uh, coming if it moves up again uh, to lighten up if you're a uh, holder. Again, we're not making any recommendations. All we're doing is sharing analysis. Pre is a stock uh, that we follow very, very regularly in here. It has multiple time frame analysis in here, and you can see the, what we call a cyclical harmonics. And that is where you have a big dominant cycle right in there. And this one divides into the minor thirds that you can see right in there. Minor thirds in here. Here you could see you had your first minor third there. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit further so you can see that. And then you had the rally in the second phase going on right over here. And you're getting up towards that really 61.8% uh, Fib extension is a long way to go. And probably a big resistance area, about 10 points from, uh, from where it is right now. How's the earnings in here? Well, um, these haven't changed much uh, since September. Um, the stock lo is losing money. Uh, it moves all the way up because it's uh, as sympathetic with the semiconductor category. Maybe those earnings are going to improve, but they're going to have to improve a lot to be able to justify uh, this a kind of valuation in this stock. I think it's crazy. Our anticipation is that this stock will trade back down to these levels over here. You can see how far it is from that 34-week moving average. And we're targeting down over here to 90 to 100 uh, out uh, in the summertime is the way that really um, points. You can get a lot of choppy action in here, but I just think that the upside versus downside is not very favorable. And the last one, RDFN, Redfin, you can see right here, uh, absolutely crazy. We know that real estate now has gone nuts. I mean, the prices have gone up. Affordability of, of home ownership uh, and availability of homes, all are very challenging right now. And you can see the cyclic action in here as the stock uh, moves up towards that uh, $100 area, gets up to 97. Um, they don't earn any money. Uh, and again, it is just simply the nature of investors wanting to be in areas that they consider potential growth, uh, and regardless of what the price is. And uh, this price is just just crazy. So you could see again the 13-week, 34-week moving average always comes down and gets tested. And now look at the distance from there right now. Best case I can make is a pullback to about 75 in here uh, between now and April is what that looks like. We're always looking at time and price, location, and that's how we forecast. Another stock that is just crazy as far as price goes, valuation, risk rewards on this, in our opinion, based on this analysis, is are, are poor. I mean, that the direction, the, the amount that it could move up versus the risk of it moving down, especially late cycle that it is right now, uh, I think is uh, pretty high. Uh, I want to talk about late cycle conditions. Um, we're just going to highlight this for you right in here. Here is late cycle conditions, the last four weeks of the cycle. You can see what happened right there. This was another one of those very bullish cycles, but it still lost a lot of ground, 20% or so. Here you can see right in here about five weeks to the downside right in there. And now we're coming into the same cyclic period right in here, where we consider it a high risk period. It could make a little more ground, sure, but we think it's going to be in a pretty high risk period based on these patterns that we see in here. Again, you want to learn more about cycle analysis, go to AskSlim.com, go to our workshop page, and there's a video there for you to be able to see how to learn this style of analysis. Five highly priced, super strong, high risk stocks. And I think I made a good case there. And if anything, I hope it was extremely educational for you. All right, so we're going to give our one to three month view in gold right now. The um, gold market uh, has been um, sloppy. That's basically what we want to call it. I want you to watch our big picture analysis, dollar gold uh, and inflation, which we uh, put out on Thursday, uh, February 11th. Uh, it's uh, about a 30-something minute video that I'm getting a lot of compliments on. Really going to get a sense for the realities of inflation, how gold and the dollar trade together, and what needs to happen right now for gold to move up and avoid a breakdown 
or what actually would be a breakdown for gold. Uh, the, I'm going to give you some of that right now, but uh, in that video I look at long-term perspectives that I think are very valuable and you're going to be fascinated by that. So go watch that video. All right, so now we're going to switch here out of Redfin and go to forward slash GC. And uh, here you could see our gold analysis. These are the weekly cycle patterns in gold. The, on the bottom, that dashed line is silver. So we keep the silver cycle on here to help us understand what's going on. Each of these bigger dominant cycles right in here is made up of two half cycles. And you can see the important low right there and right over here. See that? And quarter cycles, which you could see one, two, three, and four uh, right in there. So here, here's the, um, this was the uh, breakdown in March, which made that a little bit late. Uh, and then they got back in alignment right here. Quarter cycle, quarter cycle, quarter cycle lows, quarter cycle low right over here. So you can see right there. And that minor cycle low says we're likely to be in a time period we could move up. But it's having a hard time doing so. It's still not breaking down. And if it can move up, it would be pretty significant. That level right over there, <coughs> excuse me. That level right over there is at 1880, that is a very key level. Above that, and it can scream, it would then likely test that resistance that it failed from perfectly at 1972, and maybe even work its way up to new highs. However, this cycle low is extremely important right over here, which is at 1667, and if it gets below there, it's going to change the whole scenario of these cycles that are pushing to the upside right now. This cycle is pushing up right here. This cycle is pushing up. It had a good rally. Then you got into this corrective period. So far, it has not been able to break down. In other words, the power of this down movement or corrective money flows is not strong enough to overcome what was upside power right on these cycles right over here. That is suggestive when this ends and this begins to move up and joins the upward pressure of the more dominant patterns, you get a spike to the upside. That I think is the highest probability for the next one to three months where we look at uh, February, March moving up and then into April, and then a corrective period out into May. That is our three-month outlook that we're looking at in here. If it were to break under this level, then these projections, the, the rhythm would look the same, but the projections would be lower. And overall, the longer-term perspective would be very, very weak. I don't want to give too much away because I want you to watch the video. Uh, uh, that we did on Thursday where we talk about the longer term perspectives. But gold right now is in a very important time frame. It really needs to start moving up and get above that 1880 level to prove to us that it's getting out of trouble and the buyers are coming back. If it can do that, it could really spike. You could see upward gaps if that happened. If it fails and does not able to do that, well, you'll get the message. So it's pretty clear when you look at that. Uh, 1767 trouble, 1880, a nice short-term breakout and likely to spike to the upside. That is our one to three month outlook for gold. Coming up, we're going to give you the stock market uh, and our analysis and a very, very unique look at stock market analysis. But first, I want you to know we're announcing a special trial for level three. Only two weeks that we're going to do this. Um, we're, we, we give these super discounts uh, for people to really be able to experience what we do. This is education analysis and support for traders and investors. This is really our active trader level. And I'm going to give you 10 reasons to become a level three member. Just take a look at what we have here and then we'll talk about this discount. Reason number one in this trial, you get our simulator ranking system. We take the 84 best traded symbols and we do weekly and daily analysis on here with our cycle charts, which we update every single day. And you're going to be able to scan on here and see um, what we have. In this case, you could see Apple. Um, uh, this, this is, by the way, a long time ago. This is last September, so this isn't right now. Uh, but uh, what, I'm, what I'm giving you is where it was at the time. Uh, and then, of course, it improved very significantly. And you get to see our 
uh, long-term, intermediate, short-term rankings, our option bias indicator, and our weekly uh, and daily charts just by clicking on those. You can scroll on here, see which are the strongest, which are the weakest, and get our directional bias. Again, this is last September. Uh, I, didn't, I don't bring anything current when I do these because I want you to subscribe and really see what the current analysis is. This is just absolutely amazing. The Slimulator ranking system, number one. Number two is our special trial of trade ideas. This is analysis to help with your directional decisions with target zones and entry zones. This again is an older one looking at this from January. You can just roll over them and you'll get the status of each of those ideas. And if you click the bell that's uh, on the uh, page, you'll be able to then get our notifications when anything gets close, when it enters the uh, entry range or the target range or the reevaluation level. And our results in here have been really good, really good, where if it uh, enters the entry range and then enters the, um, the target range, imagine how hard that is to do that. Um, we're well over 60% as far as quality of those type of trades. And as far as the directional decisions, long or short, we're around 70% in there. So it's amazing quality uh, that we bring you in our trade ideas. This is what a trade ideas uh, form looks like, and you'll be able to see all of those key levels in there. We put up one or two every single day. You're also going to get our live stream for the stock index report. This is for active day traders where you get our support, resistance, acceleration zones, which are the yellow areas, and our reversal scout for your directional decisions and for decisions on pair trades. And it's just amazing. This is live every day on our chart streams. I'll show you a little bit more about chart streams right now. Updated daily and out before the morning uh, for the trading every day. Spectacular. You're also uh, going to get our daily snap. Snapshot. This is after the close where you get our momentum uh, and technical evidence. There's so much in here. Trend momentum, technical evidence on the uh, three um, major uh, stock indexes. <clears throat> Always just fantastic information, SPX, NDX, RUT. Uh, you're also going to get our two-hour charts with our momentum and projections and the <coughs> Slim Ribbon PO, fantastic, the Slim Ribbon, our uh, other proprietary indicators. And uh, you're going to get a good look here at our uh, daily charts with the uh, Hull Moving Average and our complex um, cycle um, uh, formations that we have on the daily charts. I'll show you more about that in a little bit. Uh, you believe all of this? You're going to also get chart streams. Chart streams, this is where the SIR live is. And these other seven, these are live. You don't need any special platform. You just click on it. It shows you our charts with our proprietary indicators on these uh, other seven symbols for people that are active traders. Just absolutely amazing. Live on your platform, you don't need anything else. It's just going to open up for you. So just unbelievable. Man, I can just go through so many of these. Also, besides all of that, you're going to get our weekly stock index report with in-depth analysis, huge amount of info on the uh, stock market, our week weekly ETF report with in-depth ana in analysis on uh, spider ETFs, Slimulator Momentum Tracker, this will blow you away over a thousand symbols this is for longer term position traders and investors it gives you all of our momentum conditions our built-in algorithms 20 different canned groups that you can look at uh, just you won't believe that uh, you're going to get our entire library 500 videos nine categories of things that i've produced and now are reproducing to teach you so much about engaging in the markets you're going to get uh, market week minutes which will take you exactly to the time index on our market week show the new workbench uh, where you have essentially the hub to ask slim all access to easy access to our content and our new trade planning tools and worksheets for you to do all of your work and save it on there. Imagine all of this unbelievable three-month trial, one-third off. That's $200.25. So this is normally $99 a month, but we're going to do it for $66.75 a month. If you take our three-month trial, $200.00. For all of this information for three months, that's uh, 60 trading days. What is that? Like three and a half dollars a day for all of this information? Just incredible. Well, this is the momentum tracker. This is unbelievable. Look at this. It's going to show you what our output is, the directional bias for the next three months plus. 
on over a thousand different stocks in here. In long term, intermediate, short term, our momentum readings, uh, and you'll be able to access some charts that we have in there also. You want more information on that, write Matt at AskThem.com. And here's what's in the videos. You're going to get Future Speak on Wednesdays where I analyze 24 different futures contracts. Tools for Text, there's about 85 videos in there. It tells you all so much about charting, different tools, studies, trader psychology. Well, uh, I am, for those of you that don't know, I'm also a coach. Uh, I'm certified in emotional intelligence. I'm certified as a personal growth facilitator. I bring it all together, trading and trader psychology in there. IRAMO, IRA we have a few videos in there where we look at longer term. We're going to be doing more stock sectors. RV does some great stuff in here now, and I have tons of stuff in there uh, where you look at different sectors of the market, stocks that are ready to pop or drop, really actionable stuff. Big picture analysis like I did this week on gold, the uh, dollar and inflation. Uh, lots of stuff that I bring in there on longer term perspectives of the market. Style strategy and plan. So many subjects in there about engaging in the markets. And of course we bring you our market week and you get the archive in there so you can go back and look at other videos and ask them live where you're going to see our replays of our live events and of course you get invited to all of the live events or most of them that we do every other week you're going to learn from my 46 years experience plus matt and Ari. they're absolutely amazing again it's a one-third off right now just the next two weeks it's easy to cancel if you don't like it you just let us know and you won't be renewed after that 200 bucks 66.75 a month uh, versus 99 again that's like 350 a day for all of that you can go to the SLM page click the link on the top uh, and that will take you right to the place to sign up at this discounted amount uh, you want more info or Matt can send you a link also uh, right to Matt at slim.com just absolutely incredible that was 10 different pieces of content 10 reasons for you to become a level 3 member you're an active trader you're just gonna love this all right, this is the stock market, the S&P 500, and we're going to look at a 30-day cycle and talk about, well, some correction risk that we've been discussing that we thought goes out into the middle of March. And I'll show you how that lines up based on this pattern. So I'm going to leave that gold market right there, and I'm going to move over to the SPX. And we'll move over to the daily pattern. Now, usually I, I show you the weekly uh, pattern in here, but what I want you to see are the cyclical patterns in here. I know this is a very busy chart. This also happens to have our slim ribbon on there and our slim ribbon PO, which is one of the most amazing signal indicators for momentum you will ever see. Now, what I want you to note in here the, the annotations and the blue lines. The blue lines are showing you the actual lows in cycle rhythms. The distance between this low right over here and this low over here was 33 days. 30 days, 31 days, 29 days, 27 days, 30, 30, right over there. Unbelievable, the rhythms in there. I'm going to tighten this up now for you to be able to get a little bigger, better picture of clarity in there. What you're looking at are what we call complex structures of cycles where uh, we put in uh, the highest uh, expectation, the lowest expectation based on the formation, and also what the average track would be for it to move. When it moves into the top, it's a more bullish condition. When it moves into the bottom, it's a more negative condition. And when cycles form where they make a peaks uh, early in the cycle or in the middle, it leaves a lot of time to fall, as you see right over here. When cycles peak very late, well, there's almost no time to fall. And we call these swamped or right-hand translations. This cycle, 30 days, extremely bullish. Momentum conditions, the slim ribbon in here, all of these bullish signals, lots of strength showing in there, and the same thing right in here. It went neutral for a couple days right in here, and then turned bullish again. When this is green, it is bullish. The slim ribbon also, which if you use think or swim, you can upload that, and it also colors the bars for you and colors volume bars. It's all in the coding of that. So let's just look at these last three cycles in here. <clears throat> This was a 30-day low right over here, a super bullish cycle. This was affected by the longer-term patterns, which are still moving up on strong momentum. 
The same thing right over here. You had a decline in here that took you from about 3873 down to about 36, uh, just under 3700. So that was about a 170 point move to the downside in this corrective period. It really didn't take very uh, long and held up for a long period of time. Also, there are minor cycles in here. This one only seven days long. This is nine days, this is nine days, and this is totally swamped because you couldn't even get a dip in here. That shows you how strong the upward momentum is. And now the projection of this cycle was up towards these Fib extensions right in there. This, the top of this Fib extension was at around th uh, 39 and a quarter. This one right over here about 39.50. So that's kind of the upside projection to this cycle. The, this is the intermediate average projection and then right over here is the lowest one. So we would expect that because the intermediate patterns are weighing on the market, that it is likely going to peak this uh, cycle earlier than before. Again, this was a 30-day low here, a 30-day low here. So the distance from here to here is 30 days. We, we measure cycle lengths, in this case, in the number of days. The next lows are projected over here, March 8th to March 15th. And you can see these two lines over here. This is the principle of variation that says it'll be a few days earlier or a few days later is where that comes. Uh, as you saw earlier, there were some 27-day cycles, 28-day cycles. So what the expectation is, is that because the intermediate pattern is in a corrective period, that this will come down harder. The last time, if I go back in history to the last time we had one of those where the intermediate pattern was negative, was right here. And you could see it fell very, very sharply, and that we have to go back to last March. We haven't really had any intermediate patterns that have been negative since then. So that uh, tells us that we're going to be likely under pressure that's greater than any of these other cycles. That would take us to test the 3700 area again, which is the bottom of this cycle support right there. That's 3694. And it could get down over here to 36 and a quarter and under a lot of pressure, 3535. We don't actually expect that because <clears throat> we've been looking for somewhere around a 6 or 7% drop which is upgraded from what we thought would be 10% or more earlier. But the stronger the pattern, and you can see the upward momentum in here is still very much in place, then that uh, until it gives up the upward momentum, it's, it's still susceptible to more on the upside. Again, these numbers are right up over here, around 30, 39 and a quarter to 39.50 right there. And the likelihood of getting support, if it was a super bullish pattern, would be down right over here at around 38.14. It is really unlikely that a decline from the peak to the bottom of the cycle will be as small as 100 points on the S&P 500. It, it just is extremely unlikely. It'll be much more likely to be two to 300 points uh, on the downside in there. And that is likely to come in the third minor cycle period right over here. So th the market could hold up in here, get, you know, just dance around, pull back a little, try again. And then the real acceleration coming in that final week and a half or two weeks, uh, as it often does, as you see right in here. That was three weeks right there. This was a few weeks right in here. So the, the market could chop around in here, but then we think that that 30-year cycle joining with the intermediate cycles we've been showing you week after week will push the market down into this 30-day period. That, again, is what we expect to be a modest correction in the S&P 500 of some 6-7%. Uh, between the peak that it makes, we think, in the next few days uh, and that period in there of that bottom, somewhere between March 8th and March 15th would be our guess, uh, which would take you somewhere around that 30-day period from that last low. Again, we're looking at this low right over here plus about 30 days, which takes you out over here, just as it did right over here, and it did actually right over there also. That is a look at the short term to and intermediate term, really, as we're looking out into March uh, for the stock market. I hope you found that unbelievably valuable. We always want to bring you the best information we could possibly bring. We can't be successful unless you are, and that's all we care about is your success. 
So please, uh, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Uh, hopefully you give us a nice comment on the information uh, that we bring to you. Uh, some people are not polite and we take care of them pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, we love to get your comments and love to get anything you have that is good feedback to what we do and how we can always be better. Uh, we don't like impolite people. That's just the issue. That's it for Ask Slim for today. Uh, and uh, I want you to remember to go to, oops, go to our website, uh, and uh, look at our um, specials that we have going on right now. That uh, one uh, level one and level three specials are just absolutely uh, fantastic. I want you to be so unbelievably careful. It is so crazy out there. And I'm always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to